This is chapter four of uh, Aprino la France Trois. Kalu e malad. Kalu is probably the name of a dog, right? And he is sick. Malad means sick or ill. So, Kalu le chien d'Anish e malad. Kalu, the dog of Anish, is sick. Anish telephone a son ami Manuel. And Anish he telephones to his friend Manuel. Anish says, "Allo Manuel, allo Anish, ça va?" Are you good? Pas très bien. Not too good. Mon chien Kalu est malade. My dog Kalu is sick. Qu'est-ce qu'il a? Mange-t-il bien? What happened to him? Is he eating well? Non, il ne mange pas. Il ne se lève pas et il a froid. So he is not eating. He is not getting up, and he is cold. Froid means cold. Oh, il faut amener. Kalu she le vétérinaire. Vétérinaire means the vet, uh, animal doctor. So we must take Kalu to the vet, vet uh, like vet or an animal doctor. Il y a un très bon vétérinaire près de ma maison. So there is a good animal doctor near my house. D'accord, je viens tout de suite. D'accord, I am going to come really quick. She le vétérinaire. Anish says, "Bonjour, doctor." Doctor says, "Qu'est-ce qu'il y a? What happened?" Anish says, "Mon chien Kalu est malade. My dog Kalu is sick." Doctor says, "Quel âge a-t-il? What age is he?" Anish says, "Il a deux ans. He is two years old." Je vais ausculter Kalu. I am going to examine. Ausculter means examine. I am going to examine Kalu. A prendre sa température and take his temperature. Ah, il a de la fièvre. He has fever. Il a une grippe. He has. He is basically he has cough and cold also. Est-ce que c'est grave, docteur? Is it uh, very serious? Is it serious? Doctor says no. Ce n'est pas grave. No, it's not that serious. Il faut donner ses médicaments et du lait chaud. We must give him medicines and hot, uh, uh, hot milk. Il va guérir vite. He will get well soon. Merci, doctor. Now the question is: Qui est malade? Qu'est-ce qu'il a? Who is sick? And what has happened to him? So he has fever, une grippe. À qui, à qui Anish téléphone il? Who did he telephone? Qu'est-ce que le docteur dit? What did the doctor say? Complétez avec un mot ou des mots du texte. So you have to fill in the blanks with the words. J'ai mal à la tête et j'ai de la. I have a headache and I have something which is feminine. Il dash toujours à 6h30. He dash always at 6h30. C'est l'hiver, nous avons dash. It's winters, we have dash. Monsieur, je veux du café. Dash. Monsieur, I want to have dash coffee. Il parle trop dash. He speaks very dash. Trouvez dans le texte deux adjectifs, two adjectives, the were, two verbs. Le contraire de chaud et mal. The opposites of chaud and mal. And un mot pour quelqu'un qui soigne les animaux. A word. For someone who takes care of animals, there is some vocabulary for animals here. So you have un chien. Chien is a masculine word. Un chien, dog. Une vache is a cow. Un chat is a cat. Un bœuf is a bull. Un mouton is a sheep. Un tigre. Tigre is a tiger. Un lion is a lion. Un éléphant is an elephant. Un ours is a bear. Une girafe is a giraffe. Un renard is a fox. Un cheval is a horse. A loop is a bull. Uh, sorry, a loop is a what do we call it? A wolf, right? A wolf. Un singe is a monkey. Un An is a donkey. A kangaroo is a kangaroo. An hippopotam is a hippopotamus. 
Yun chèvre is a goat, a chameau is a camel, and a rhinosaurus is a rhinosaurus. Then you have some expression avec avoir means that even though in English it means that I am, you are, like that. For example, we have je huit ans. <coughs> I am eight years old, right? But here we don't use am. In English we use am, but here we use the verb avoir, which means to have or has. The conjugations for avoir you need to know for this, which is je, tu a, il, el, a. Nous avons, vous avez, and il, elle, on. So I'm sure you might have done these conjugations before. How to say something is uh, like uh, this. It's like permanent phrases that you have to learn and it's used with avoir. For example, avoir femme, to be hungry. J'ai femme, I am hungry. Tu as femme, you are hungry. Avoir soif means to be thirsty. J'ai soif. I'm thirsty. Tu as soif. Il elle a soif. Nous avons soif. Avoir peur. To be uh, scared. Vous avez peur. You are scared. Avoir sommeil. To be sleepy. Sommeil means sleepy. So, j'ai sommeil. I'm sleepy. Avoir 70 ans, to be uh, uh, eight, uh, 60 years old. 70, sorry, 70 is 70. To be 70 years old, right? So, to, to tell about age, we use avoir, just like all these other things. To tell about your hunger, your thirst, your um, that you are scared, that you are sleepy. You use verbs uh, like avoir. So, here also to tell age, you will use the verb avoir instead of être. Avoir de la chance means to be lucky. J'ai de la chance means I'm lucky. So again, you will not use être, you will use avoir. Avoir show to be hot or to feel hot. J'ai show. I am hot. Avoir froid to be cold. I'm feeling cold. Avoir raison. It means to be right. For example, I say, vous avez raison. You are right. Vous avez raison. Avoir tort. You are wrong. To be wrong. Vous avez tort. You are wrong. Right? So these are some phrases with avoir. Then you have chez le médecin in the uh, chez le médecin basically means at doctor's clinic what you mal so doctor asks you where does it hurt mal means hurt where are you hurt or what's wrong j'ai mal au dent i have pain in my teeth j'ai mal à la tête i have a headache j'ai mal au pied i have a leg ache or a foot ache J'ai mal au ventre. I have a stomach ache. J'ai mal à la gorge. I have a neck ache. My neck is paining. J'ai mal au dos. My back is paining. Now, j'ai mal, you will write. Then you need to know all the body parts for it. The thing that is extra is à la. Or if you notice here, there is a u. So how, what, do you, what do you use when? If the body part is masculine body part, like ventre is masculine, you would use AU. J'ai mal au ventre for masculine. If your body part is feminine, for example, tête, you would use à la. If your body part is plural, for example, les yeux, eyes are plural, you would use O. Um, for example, j'ai mal aux yeux. If your body part is, it starts with a vowel, you will use a l apostrophe, right? So it's plural and it's a vowel. Then you have l'interrogation. There are three ways of making a question. First is intonation, 
right intonation means the sound of my voice you by using a rising intonation for example my simple sentence is vous parlez français you speak french now i want to make this into a question i will say do you speak french not even by say adding do you i will just say you speak french and you would know that i am talking about a question you speak french oui je parle français tu regardes la télé you watch television tu ne regardes pas la télé you don't watch television so this is just through your basic sentence and you add a question mark to it and uh, it is known through your voice that you are asking a question that is an intonation then for example i have a simple sentence for example wo parle anglais first one first one was that i just put a question mark and it becomes a question right and through my voice you would know that i'm asking a question that you speak english that's it i can also say it in a normal sentence you speak english you speak english now you would know the difference between two that the first one was a normal sentence and the second one was a question but to these normal sentences i can also add s k s k vous parlez français and as soon as i as soon as i add s k to it it becomes a question s k vous parlez anglais simple as that basically previously when i did not add s k and i just used my intonation i said vous parlez anglais it was through my intonation right through my voice it meant literally you speak english but when i add s k it became do you speak english so s k sort of you can say it means do it's not it's not a literal translation uh, it is just equivalent of do in english so you speak english or do you speak english third is inversion by inverting the verb and the pronoun and inserting a hyphen you uh, in between the verb and the pronoun you make a question for example now i said vous parlez anglais right this is this was my question or i say est ce que vous parlez anglais third way of writing is that i change this verb and this pronouns position so instead of this coming first and this coming second now this will come first and this will come second so it would become parle hyphen vu angle and this is how i can make a question now i'll give you one sentence where we can write uh which we can write in three four different ways for example i say il uh il mange la pomme right he eats apple now this is a simple sentence he eats an apple my question can be il mange la pomme this is through intonation the first way second way i just add s k il mange la pomme does he eat apple third way would be mange and il la pomme again it is inversion my verbs my verb will come before my subject pronoun now there is one trick because mange ends with e and il starts with i i have to add an extra t to it that is it that's one rule but otherwise you just put the verb before the subject pronoun and it is inverted for example parle t il français e and i are coming together in inversion two vowels come together so i add an extra t otherwise i don't regard il la la tele is he watching television no regard til pa la tele is he not watching television that's it then you have interrogation negative ac so negative interrogations basically my normal question would be vous parlez français negation would be vous ne parlez pas français you know that when we negate we put ne plus verb 
plus pa to negate a sentence. Question is the same thing. Vous ne parlez pas français? You don't speak French. In esque form, it would become esque vous ne parlez pas français. And in inversion, it would become ne parlez vous pas français. So this would be in between because you cannot break the hyphen. Parlez vous will always go together. Ne plus verb plus pa. Ne regarde tu pas la télé. It works like this. Now, whenever you have, so for example, you have a positive question, right? Your answer would be, for example, parlez-vous français? Oui, je parle français. Yes, I speak French. Ne parlez pas vous français? This is my negative question. I would say si je parle français. If I want to say yes, we and si both mean yes only. But the difference is when my question is positive, we would be written. When my question is negative, I will write si. If I want to say no, I don't speak French, then I will write no for both the cases. Even if my question is in positive, even if my question is in negative, then it does not matter. So you have been given questions. Vous ne parlez pas français? Don't you speak French? Si, je parle français. Yes, I speak French. Ne regarde-t-il pas la télé? Does he not watch television? Si, il regarde la télé. Yes, he watch television. And then you have to, you have some questions. Mettez les phrases suivantes à la forme interrogative en utilisant le trois form. So you have to put these sentences. These are normal affirmative sentences. You have to put it in uh, either intonation form. Just putting a question mark. Esque, you put esque and write your sentence. And inversion. Verb first plus your uh, hyphen plus your pronoun. This way. Mettez les phrases suivantes à la forme interrogative en utilisant la forme mentionnée. Second form means esque form. Third form means your reversal form. Right? First means your uh, intonation. Like that. You have to put all these sentences into the form that is mentioned. Devine et coller les animaux en utilisant les autocollants. Autocollants are stickers basically. Uh, you have to guess what animal it is. Je suis grand et noir et j'ai deux oreilles énormes. I have two big ears. So what is that animal? Je vis dans la maison. I live in the house. Je suis petit et mignon. Je mange de souris. I am small and cute and I eat mice. I am a dash, so a chat, of course. Je suis un oiseau. I am a bird. Je vis dans le poilier in a nest. Je donne, des, uh, je donne les œufs. Je suis une. So I give eggs and I am a dash. Je vis dans la niche. Je suis carnivore. Je protège la maison. Je j'aboie aux étrangères. I bark on the strangers. Je suis un dash. Je vis dans l'étable, in a stable. Je suis herbivore. I am a herbivore. I eat plants. Je donne le lait. I give milk. Je suis une dash. Now you have to give the answer, reply to the answers with oui, si or no. Vous aimez le football? Oui, j'aime le football. Non, je n'aime pas le football. Negative one could be, for example, this one. N'allez-vous pas suivant au restaurant? Don't you go frequently to the restaurant? Oui, no. You will not use oui here. You have to use si. Because it's a negative question. Remember, it's a negative question. So you would use C. C. Je vais souvent au restaurant. Like that. Then you have to use associate un problème à une solution. J'ai faim. I'm hungry. J'ai mal à la tête. I have a headache. Elle a sommeil. She is sleepy. Il a mal au dos. Backache. Marc a froid. He is cold. Ils ont soif, he is thirsty. Ils ont chaud, he is feeling hot. Gaston a mal au ventre, he is having a stomachache. Il prend une aspirine, it's usually used for headaches. Il va chez le médecin, 
he is going to the doctor's house il mange de la glace eating ice cream elle va dormir she can sleep mange une pomme eat an apple applique une pommade uh, apply an ointment boive de l'eau drink water porte un chandail you put something on yourself like to cover yourself up like a jacket or a sweater complete avec le verbe donné you basically have to conjugate these verbs you have ir and re verbs here which you might have done you have to conjugate le verbe suivant and it has been given if it's in affirmative negative interrogative th- uh, second interrogative third through vela question you have to find the questions answers are given to you you have to find the questions then you have the adjectives you just have to put it in masculine form feminine singular form masculine plural form feminine plural form and then you have you have to this is the word bank you have to fill in the word bank and that's it this is your chapter done now you can just solve the questions and send me the answers